In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve molar heat capacity problems in a typical physics course. So let's consider this one. How much heat energy in joules is required to heat up 5 moles of water from 20 to 50 degrees Celsius? Now the formula that you need is this equation. Q is equal to NC delta T. Q represents the heat energy in joules. N is the number of moles, C is the molar heat capacity, and delta T represents the change in temperature. So our goal is to calculate the value of Q. So we have 5 moles of water, so that's N. The molar heat capacity is 75.4 joules per mole per degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, the final minus the initial, that's 50 minus 20, so we have a change of 30 degrees Celsius. Now if we take a look at the units, we can see that the unit Celsius cancels and the unit moles will cancel as well. So we're going to get the heat energy in joules. So it's going to be 5 times 75.4 times 30. And so it's 11,310 joules. Number 2. It takes 8,860 joules of heat energy to raise the temperature of 8 moles of a substance from 25 to 70 degrees Celsius. Calculate the molar heat capacity of the substance. So let's use the same formula. So this time, we already have the value of Q. It's 8,860 joules. Now we have N as well, that's 8 moles. And the molar heat capacity is what we're solving for. Now the change in temperature, that's going to be 70 minus 25. So that's an increase of 45 degrees Celsius. Now first, let's multiply 8 by 45. 8 times 45 is 360. So now to calculate the value of C, we need to divide both sides by 360. So the molar heat capacity is 8,860 divided by 360. And so it's going to be 24.6 joules per mole per Celsius. Sometimes you might see it as joules per mole per Kelvin. And the difference in two temperatures in Celsius or in Kelvin is the same. So for example, if you convert 25 Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273, that's 298 Kelvin. 70 plus 273 is 343 Kelvin. However, if you subtract 343 by 298, the difference is still 45. So the difference in the Celsius temperature is the same as the difference in the Kelvin temperature. Number three, two moles of a metal at 150 degrees Celsius was added to 10 moles of water at 20 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the mixture was 26 degrees Celsius. What is the molar heat capacity of the metal? So in this problem, we have a heat transfer situation. So let's say this is the water and this is the metal. Heat is going to flow from the metal to the water. So the temperature of the metal is going to decrease from 150 to 26. And the temperature of the water is going to increase from 20 to 26 until they reach thermal equilibrium. So how can we use this information to calculate the molar heat capacity of the metal? So the thermal energy lost by the metal is equal to the energy absorbed by the water. Now we need to put a negative sign because the metal released energy and so it's exothermic for the metal but the water absorbed it so it's endothermic. So we're going to have NC delta T on both sides of the equation. Now delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So the left side is for the metal, the right side is for the water. So we have two moles of metal, so N is 2. Our goal is to calculate C. The final temperature is 26 and the initial temperature of the metal is 150. 
On the right, the number of moles of water is 10. The molar heat capacity of water is 75.4. The final temperature is 26. And the initial temperature of water is 20. 26 minus 150, that's negative 124. And so that's why we need this negative sign, so that the left side will be positive. So negative 124 times negative 2, that's positive 248. On the right side, 26 minus 20 is 6, and 6 times 75.4 times 10 is 4,524. So now we just got to take 4524 and divide it by 248. So the molar heat capacity of the metal is 18.24 joules per mole per degree Celsius.